What's up everybody? This is Tom Kite and this is our first edition of Real Talk where I give you the goods on everything men's fitness so you can take your game to the next level. Today we're looking at Mike Menser's consolidation training protocol. You know, the one that preaches two sets for workout number one, followed by seven whole days of rest, followed by workout number two, and then another seven days of rest. The workout protocol taking 14 days to complete. What are my thoughts on it? What's the good? What's the bad? And what's the ugly? Let's go. Workout number one, squats and pull downs. That's it. Mike Menser recommends using a Smith machine for the squats and there's a good reason for that. Rarely will a person go to failure on a set of conventional squats. It's extremely dangerous, especially that last rep. Never mind, last rep or two. Nor do people actually have the guts, the balls to go that far. Realistically, people stop well before failure on a conventional squat. Doing the Smith machine, however, gives you tremendous safety, knowing your body is locked into a certain position and you can bail out very quickly by just racking the weight, just twisting it. It's all you have to do to lock it in. So it is relatively safe and more conducive to going all out till failure. Menser recommends eight to 15 reps until failure. And I really like that idea because the weight's not gonna be so heavy on your back as something like a rep range of six to eight, for example, just a lot more forgiving. I also think that 15 reps all out is gonna give you enough metabolic damage necessary to actually build your muscles. Tom Platts talks about doing these all out leg days and then not training legs that intensely for another two weeks afterwards. Now I've personally had training sessions where I trained my legs so hard for one set all out balls to the wall that it took me a good one week to recover properly. We're talking all out. You think you're done and then you do that one more rep that takes seven seconds to lift where you're just trembling all the way. This set is a real stressor. And honestly, I think personally one set is enough. Second set in the routine is pull down. There's tension on the muscles throughout the set. Going six to 10 reps all out with super proper cadence, squeezing at the bottom, bringing it up slowly, maintaining tension. This exercise is wicked at stimulating the back as well as the biceps and the rear delts. I also know that if I supervised you through this all out set of 10 reps, it would feel very different from the six to 10 reps that you see in the gym from the ordinary Joe Schmo. The hard part to accept with this workout is that you're walking home after just doing two sets. I think you have to use the analogy of a 100 meter sprinter running at 100% capacity all out for a race. I used to be a sprinter. You will not be able to race again at that capacity that day. You're gonna be exhausted after one run you run the risk of tearing your hamstring completely because the intensity exactly is exactly that high. Now, doing two sets all out could very well work. My concern is not necessarily with the two sets, but rather the amount of time that you rest before your next workout, which is seven full days. It seems a little ridiculous. It's safe to say that with this kind of intensity, you could train again two weeks from now and not lose muscle, but I'm in the game of gaining muscle mass. Workout two, deadlifts and dips. The legendary Westside Barbell Gym had a quote to the effect that one all out rep would take about 1.5 to two weeks to fully recover from. That being said, imagine doing five to eight reps all out. Imagine the damage done to your body, stopping nothing short of failure for those full eight reps. Even rep number two, three, four is gonna seem extremely heavy if you've ever done heavy deadlifting. Now, within the parameters and the rigidity of two sets, I would probably replace this deadlift with a leg press. And I'd probably make that set about an all out set to 15 reps. Dips as the king of upper body exercises. That's debatable. It definitely works the chest, the shoulders, the triceps. Done properly, full range of motion in a controlled manner. This exercise is going to facilitate growth, no doubt. Some people have to add some weight to the exercise to get the resistance required. In my experience with dips, which I actually do incorporate them into my routine and I love it, I will finish that set all out until failure and I just don't feel like I've done enough. And believe me, it's balls to the wall. There's 70 pounds attached to my body. I get about 12 reps. Again, I just walk out of it saying it's not enough. 
Perhaps this could be replaced with a bench press type movement to get a greater effect. It goes on to use the example of gymnasts and the size of these guys. I really do believe that exercises like pull-ups and dips can in fact build a huge body. We're so caught up in the fact that we want to build this perfect type of physique where our traps are being focused on, so are our rear deltoids in an isolation type movement. We're working our calves separately. We're doing hamstring curls. A long time ago, the golden era athletes were massive with just the basics. I think we're a little bit spoiled by all the equipment we have access to. In fact, I think Menstrues point is that you don't need all of that to build a strong muscular body. If I'm not seeing results in one month, I will change the program. If you're recording your results and you're not seeing progress, there's something wrong. Perhaps it's as to the intensity of the exercise is not enough. Perhaps you're not getting enough nutrition. Perhaps there's too much rest in between workouts. Perhaps you're not sleeping enough. But do not wait six months to go through something that's not working. Did Mansur pick the best possible exercises considering you can only pick four? I think that's debatable. I've also mentioned some alternatives in the video and nobody says that you can't modify your own routine to select the exercises that you think might be better. I really do like his point about gauging the success of a program. It's not going to be determined by a pump or soreness. Rather, I love the idea of recording your results and trying to beat them the next day. If you consistently do this over time, your program is working 100% and you're going to get bigger, you're definitely going to get stronger. My overall thoughts on the consolidation program. This very well may work for somebody. I personally don't have the confidence to carry out this routine with this much rest in between workouts. Perhaps that's my problem. Do I think a routine like this can work if you did both workouts in a week or perhaps both workouts in a span of 10 days, giving yourself five days rest in between? Possibly. Is adding a set or two to the overall plan worthwhile? Perhaps. Menser laid out the bare bones basic place to start with. I don't think this was meant to be a be all end all ideal program, but more of a philosophy.